I've had the opportunity of hosting the premiere of Anguilla when the call came from my very good friend Dorothy Hodge that Denta, I'm coming with the premiere to Ghana. Can you arrange X, Y, Z? I'll try. Google. I was like, oh my god, it's in the Caribbean! And lord and behold, the premiere came to Ghana and it's been a real eye opener. We are so honoured to have you. It's going to be a great six day trip. We are going to get you to see the true Ghana. Yes. You know, we are the gateway to Africa. I want to thank you for the hospitality and I do feel like I'm home. Yes. And I was getting on the flight in Amsterdam, coming to Accra, and then when I landed here, I said, this feels like home. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to be home. Yes. Thank you very much. I appreciate the welcome. Hi guys, my name is Kweko Bediako, founder, creative director, Chocolate Clothes Global. And today I'm, I'm beyond excited. I'm just, I'm, I'm fully elated. Um, we, you know, we got the chance to host the prime minister, the head of state of Anguilla. We got a chance to interact with what the opportunities and what the prospects are. I feel like from we in Africa versus the Caribbean as a whole, there's so many things that bring us together. There's so many things that are alike and are aligning and conversations like what just happened today and opportunities like these I don't take lightly at all. So I'd like to big ups to that lady herself, Lady Denta, the whole entire Odana network crew. They came to Ghana to find our beginnings, what made us who we are, what makes us think the way we do, what we yearn for. I came to Ghana looking for love and all of that is embodied and one person, you, Chocolate. Um, certainly just, just being here, is, is, it's a whole experience. I may be late in coming back, but I came back. Yes. And that's, uh, that's what it's about. But tonight, I must say, I feel embodied by a spirit that you carry, that you emanate, that you give off, that says that our ancestors are still here that they carry us through. Whatever trial, tribulation, wherever we may go, whatever gets in our way, that we'll find a way through it, push on through. So tonight I want to toast to you and to us. I'm really, really honored with your words and thank you so much for you know, taking the time off. But I can take all the credit. I, I, I mean, come on, I mean, I, I, did, I, I keep on saying that to like, this lady over here, it's very important who we surround ourselves with. And I think the most important thing is now being very intentional about being around the right people. People who understand the vision I'm on and, and people who, who trust me on their vision or on their journey as well. And that's the event. So, you know, I, I, I won't take this at all. I'll definitely say thank you thank as you. usual. <laughs> and I just want to remind you that this is home. This is where you belong. And trust me, for the six days that you're here, the ancestors are rejoicing because you made it back. And so it's, it's important that we get together as a family. We break bread as a family. We support each other as a family. And you know, we walk in that grace, we walk in that, the element that you know, the ancestors left for us to, to do that. Because what they went through, when we go to Cape Coast and the last bath, where they had the last bath, you will realize that what we are going through today as a people is nothing 
compared to what they went through. Yeah. And for you to return is a big deal. Yeah. Seeing the vision of the ancestors who wanted this to happen. Yes. yes. So Absolutely. we are revising that vision. Absolutely. In so to us. To us. To us. To us. And to the ancestors. Yeah. And to the ancestors. <laughs>
and 50 years of slavery and violence and beating and we are still standing and they thought we would go through the door of no return and not return and we have returned. I'm Premier Dr. Ellis Lorenzo Webster from Anguilla in the Caribbean and certainly it is good to be here. This is a sacred place and you feel it to be here where our ancestors walked 600 miles to go to this area where they took their last bath. It reminded me of the blood, the hardship, the tears that they must have had as they realized that they were going to a place of no return. And as I was taking that walk, I could hear them speaking to me and then saying, it's good that you are back. No matter what you went through, we went through times that were tougher. Now you have come back to be reverent, to understand. And then when I went down to the river, you could hear the river speaking. And as it moved, you can feel the spirit of the ancestors. And they were happy that we returned home to essentially bring their souls back to what they left. My name is Tony Woody and I'm going to be your guide, I'm going to show you around. This is Cape Coast Slave Castle. The British built it in 1664. So that stands to reason that Cape Coast Slave Castle is the youngest slave castle. But this slave castle is 358 years old. Now there's no cement in this building. What you see is not made of cement. This is made of lime and oyster shells from the ocean. They grind them. And because of that, there's a phenomenon behind this wall. We call the breeding walls. Now when moisture or water enters on a surface, these walls do not absorb the water. They allow the water to penetrate through them and evaporate on the other surface. No matter how many times you paint these walls, in the next three to six weeks, they are going to look old like we see them. Now when you get to the dungeons, I'm going to show you the atrocities our ancestors had to experience. In a male slave dungeon were as many as 1,000 enslaved African men. In a female slave dungeon were as many as 500 enslaved African women. That represents mass incarceration. This is a male slave dungeon, and it has five chambers. In each one of them were about 200 enslaved African men. So that means there were about 1,000 men here. This is where the enslaved African men would eat, sleep, defecating. There was no light like this light. Beneath this dark floor are bricks. We were supposed to be standing right now on bricks. There's been millions of African men here. This is where they were eating, sleeping, defecating, dying. So their feces, the food that they were eating, blood piled up to become this dark floor. So right now we are walking, we are standing on the traces of the DNA of our ancestors. Before what we are all standing is part of what you call the West African traditional spirituality. This is a shrine. There are 77 shrines in Cape Coast, but this shrine is the leader. We call the shrine Nana Tavern. Now the female slave dungeons are closer to the door of no return. There are two dungeons for the African woman. These are the two female dungeons. In each one of them were 200 and 50 African women. That's the maximum number. Minimum number was 150. I'm here to honor, show respect to our ancestors who made this tortuous journey from their homes through difficult terrain, through difficult times, treated as a product 
brought here, sustained, survived this, and made it through. They were able to make it to the Americas, the Caribbean, to Brazil, so that those of us with that history could come back here. To... I've been humbled by this experience. And certainly I'm better for it because now I know that whatever I have to go through, I can endure because they survive much worse than we can ever, ever imagine. So on behalf of myself, my wife, Marjorie, children, the people of Anguilla, my cousin, the speaker of the house, my husband, all our friends and family, and everyone assembled here, I'd like to present this, this wreath in honor of our ancestors. May God bless them. May their souls rest in peace. Ashi. 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 Today is a cloudy and rainy day, and, and I think it's befitting of what the day has been like for me. Um, First Lady of Anguilla, Marjorie Webster, I came here to, to see, to see where my people came from, where my ancestors came from, and I have to say that seeing it and feeling it and being in the spaces where they were tortured in New Mainly has just been uh, very sad and very tragic for me. And then amazing to see the strength and resilience of the people who survived, who went to the, went into those awful oceans and came to the Caribbean, came into the States and were my forefathers. So for me, this has been a um, very difficult day, but an eye-opening experience. And I, I truly want my children to come and see this and, and feel this and, and you know, in, in order to, sometimes you live your daily life and you don't quite appreciate what your people went through. And you get upset about a little this and a little that, and you know, it's nothing in comparison to what happened to our people. And so I appreciate the opportunity to, to experience it myself, and I'll be able to share that back home, and I'm going to bring my family back again. May you all be blessed, who have returned to reconnect with our ancestors. And as you go back home, May all of you here share this experience with many brothers and sisters for them to also return to the ancestral home. Now the last part is very important. We have to promote black love. We made our first stop at the residence of the former president, J. A. Kofor. We gathered to pay our heartfelt condolences for the loss of his beloved wife. Amidst the sober atmosphere, we shared our sympathies and offered our support to a man who has served his nation with dedication and grace. It was a poignant reminder of the human side of leadership, where compassion and empathy transcend politics. So this is the thing. I hope you're enjoying your stay in Ghana. Well, is this your first time? The very first time. I hope you're One of it. many. I should have met you about two days yeah, ago. Yeah. Unfortunately, yes. even as we were waiting for you, this thing fell us. So I'm happy and honored that you've made the time to come in. Fair oh, condolences with us. Condolences. God bless. God bless. Bye -bye. God bless you. Keep you strong. Thank you. God bless you. Some of the First Lady's achievement looked at undeveloped parts of Accra, such as Kotobabi and Amasamai. She facilitated the acquisition and installation of mammogram machine for Sunyane General Hospital and sponsored training in soap making, dressmaking and shea butter processing in areas such as Kumasi, Kofurigia and the Northern Region.
She retired from public life in 2019 due to ill health. She passed away peacefully in her house at Pediasi on the 1st of October, 2023. She is survived by her husband, one sister, all five of her children and 13 grandchildren. We visited the cutting edge greenhouse agriculture project led by Agri Impact Limited with their wealth of expertise in agriculture, advisory services and agribusiness project development. Meet the, the Premier, oh. the Prime Minister of Anguilla. Ah, nice good meeting. Evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good good evening. evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Sorry to okay. keep you out. Oh, no, no, no. Oh. We are patient for you. Uh, <laughs> we are glad you made it. Yes. 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 <laughs> and then also see how we can throw some support uh, to replicate oh, this yeah. model also. Yes. It's your place. Yes. My name is Dan. Yes. i the CEO of Agri Impact. Uh, it's, it's a Ghanaian firm of over 25 years experience in oh, agribusiness. Yes. We've done agribusiness projects in over 30 countries yes. in Africa. So these are uh, greenhouses. Yes. And the model is that was financed by the Exim Bank of Ghana. Oh, okay. To create jobs for young people. Yes. Promote exports and to reduce imports. So these are the main reasons why we set this up. And how do you recruit the young people? We advertise, yes. they apply, they go through selection, and then those who qualify are assigned to the greenhouses. So we have it in 10 different locations in the country, but this is the largest yes. one. Each greenhouse is about 640 square meters. We've brought in 200. And I love uh, the emphasis on the youth that you yes, have here. Yes, it's, it's a big priority for us yes. because we have a, long, uh, a lot of young people. Yes. We need to create opportunities for them. Definitely. And you want to keep them here in Ghana. You don't want them yes. venturing a feel like yes. happens to us with our brain drain. <laughs> OK, finally. <laughs> okay. As he, he has mentioned, this is a 640 square meter with a total of 1,002 plants. Yes. That we are looking at an average of between 4 and 5 kilos per, per, uh, per plant. For these tomatoes, you can do two cycles a year. Mm -hmm. But normally we do crop rotation. There are three main crops that we do, tomatoes, cucumber, and then um, bell peppers. So this is something can be done anywhere in the world, right? Because yes. it's controlled environment. Yes. What do you produce most? Um, well, we do peppers, lettuce, okay. and tomatoes, but very small scale because we don't have much land. Yeah. So we would need this something one, like and this and the, the, to do the vertical farming. Yeah. Once you get the structure, yes, the low cost is, after yes. that. And so even on hot days, hot this days, will yes. maintain a... Excellent. Excellent, that's great. Yeah. We take pictures or they'll kill the crops? Please, please take as many pictures as you want. Our distinguished stopover at the magnificent residence of Mr. Macdan Macaulay, a visionary leader and one of Africa's foremost business conglomerates, unfolded in a captivating experience. Hi, good evening. Ellis Webster, it's a pleasure to meet you. Yeah. 
Thank you. I'm a colleague. Uh, nice. All right. Nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Willis. My wife, Marjorie. Lovely to meet you, Dorothea. Yeah, I'm a yeah. colleague. Dorothea is a UK representative. Yes, Sir William. He is Hello, the Doc. And you are. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> It's a pleasure, nice thank you. Pleasure. Anguilla is one country I want to come and relax. When, uh, and you would relax. <laughs> it is very relaxing. Nice seeing you here. Yes. Yeah, I'm happy to receive you. We're very, very pleased to yeah, receive you. At the dinner table, maybe we'll talk some more. But this is hope. Anytime you are in the area, you can always pass by. I'm trying to have my links towards the Caribbean. Putting in a ship, a ship to connect Africa, Africa to the Caribbean. Yes. The black, yeah. So we are reviving the black star. Yeah. So we almost completed. He's on top of it. Then the ship is in Japan. Well, I heard you can fly though down to Anguilla. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I will. I wanted to say uh, thank you for allowing us into your home and for offering this that it can become our home. And I want to thank you for allowing us to have this evening with you, for your hospitality and your kindness, and for everyone who has contributed to this evening. And I think that tonight, uh, you know, we feel that circle is closing, <laughs> where, you know, that bond of love and fellowship is really uh, manifesting itself bringing it to fruition. And so I would like to see us make that connection where Anguillians feel that they can come and feel as welcome as I feel welcome. And so to you, to your family, to your people, to Ghana, to Anguilla, to love, family. Here, here. Thank you, thank you. All right. The doors are always open and I'm happy you want to find your roots in this part of the world. Ghana is a beautiful place. And on behalf of uh, myself, I want to present you a little gift from oh, Anguilla. No. My wife is in the kitchen. Ah! So she yeah. has to come and... Is she? Okay. <laughs> I hope that you enjoy and also you learn a little bit more about us. Yes, sir. Um, you know, as I said, we are separated only by a body of water. But we are one. Exactly. Yes, and thank you. And we'll vacation. Yes, <laughs> true. True, true, true. And your next vacation. We'll do. Over a scrumptious business dinner, we delved into discussions that transcend borders, showcasing Mr. McCauley's remarkable presence in shipping aviation as we embarked on a tour through his opulent mansion we were enchanted by the embodiment of excellence and ambition that mr mcdan mccauley's world Our expedition brought us to the heart of Ghana, where we were warmly welcomed by the Deputy CEO of Ghana Tourism Authority, Mr. Echo Samson. Wow. Yes. 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 We are really honored. This is the first lady. Wow. Oh, wow. 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 Yes. Yes. I'm the yes. UK yes. representative. Oh, Lovely to meet good. you. Good. Good. Happy to meet you as well. Please, yes. can you have a seat? So, Echo is the deputy CEO yeah. of um, Ghana Tourism Authority. So he's my boss. I'm on the board. So I'm on the board of the Ghana. I'm my boss. Yeah. Yes. Because Anguilla is known for tourism, yeah. I wanted to see whether there's any support that we can give them, anything that we can learn from them. Because even though they have a population of 15,000 people, mm. they have one of the best tourism yeah. um, when it comes to hospitality, yeah. hotels, beaches. Thank you very much, uh, Your Excellency. It's a privilege. It's good to hear from you and the little that we can also learn from you, we can pick it up from you, so you are welcome. And Ghana, as you know, is one of the peaceful 
countries in the world. Right. It's also sitting in the center of the world. We are focusing on domestic tourism. And out of this, we come out with a tagline, experience Ghana, share Ghana. From there, last year, we've seen dramatic improvements, almost from 500,000 numbers. Now we had about over 900,000 arrivals in the various story site, which was a big leap from a window. The target was 1 million. We are not yet there, but looking at the intensity that we are doing, we are still creating that awareness. We say Anguilla, you know, the sun, sand, and sea, but our people are our greatest asset. And, um, you know, I think Ghana runs very close in terms of matching us in hospitality of the people. They're friendly, yeah. welcoming, warm, and, and, and so that's good. Yes, good morning, sir. Nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. It's a Please come join me here. Thank you. See, Ambassador, um, we wanted to come and see you because I feel like there's opportunities, especially when His Excellency has taken a bold step to come here. That's why we're here this morning. We are looking at various trade opportunities with the Caribbean. That uh, maybe we have to organize some, some trip there and do some uh, inter African Caribbean event in Anguilla to host uh, everybody else. That in itself is a tourism uh, opportunity, but at the same time to some uh, business. Uh, certainly, thank you for your time. And uh, what I'd like to see is us expand that hospitality or you know, return it even to persons uh, from Ghana and from West Africa coming uh, to visit us. We then had a business lunch that took place at the impressive office of Ibrahim Mahama, a prominent Ghanaian business renowned for his vast accomplishments. Ibrahim is one of our biggest business person in Ghana and he is into a lot of businesses and trades and I know he's always looking for opportunity. My background is actually more industry and into mining as well, like bauxite, iron ore, gold, and other minerals as well is my experience. So we have been looking to, a few of our colleagues have actually traveled through the Caribbean to be able to share some ideas of how best we could integrate the synergies of our experience together. And we feel that once we get out there, we'll be able to showcase our uh, talents, not to say we, we've got the best of this here, we've got the best of that here, but we should actually synchronize and be the best of everything, you know. So um, we're looking forward to coming to visit also to see how best we can also inflict some of our experience and knowledge to our brothers and sisters in the Caribbean as well. We certainly uh, need that type of experience of uh, our bigger brothers and sisters who have been through it and certainly, um, you know, we are young, fledging nations. Uh, we're willing to learn, but to help our people, because the, the goal is we want to leave it better than we met it. And um, I know that here in Ghana, I've seen by the short time I've been here that uh, you have gone through it, yep. experienced the highs and lows, but yep. you're coming out on top. Yes. And I think I need a holiday, so I'll be heading your way. <laughs> <laughs> Next stop was the KGO Foundation, where we met the chairman, Mr. Alex Daddy, a diasporan who has moved to Ghana to transform lives through sustainable social interventions, realms of sport, health, education, culture, arts, and many more. Witnessing their unwavering dedication left us an indelible mark in our hearts, reminding us of the power of collaboration. Hi. Meet the Premier Lee. Nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yes, and right. his wife. Hi. Nice to meet you. Great to meet you. And then meet Dorothea. Lovely and to meet you. Lovely to meet you. Awesome. Thank you. I love your island. I've been there twice. Oh, thank you. Okay, that's the question. I went to the Caribbean Island. Yeah, 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 I went to the Carib
This is a calling card to everything that Ghana is extolling since year of return. Everybody wants, you know, a vibrant home. Everybody wants to be a part of the inner fiber of what we're doing. And we wanted to put it into brick and mortar. Yes. So you're not just looking at a building. We've built in an ecosystem that will allow anyone who comes, doesn't know anybody, doesn't know where to get a driver's license, where to open a bank account. We have offices here that will literally lead you into all of that infrastructure. Thank you so much for honouring the invitation to come to Imperial Homes. They have been in existence for over 15 years. When it comes to high-end, just like you are in Anguilla, high-end properties, high-end, that's what Anguilla does and that's what Imperial Homes does. I know that one of the things that Anguilla is looking to do is to expand their airport and apart from building homes, Imperial Homes are into construction as well. So that might be something of interest to them as well. One of our stops was at the British High Commission, where we met Her Excellency Harriet Thompson, who graciously welcomed us, setting the stage for a fruitful discussion between Ghana and Anguilla. This remarkable collaboration promises to strengthen the bonds between these two diverse yet interconnected parts of the world we live in, ushering in a new era of cooperation and progress through the UK, Ghana and Anguilla relationship. Time for the dentist. Yes. Hello. From yeah, Zimbabwe. Right. Good nice to meet you. Too. Nice to meet you. From Zimbabwe. Too. That's right. Mm -hmm. All right. This is Clara. Good to meet you. So she's the brand, the yes. designer oh, okay. that I spoke about. Uh, yes. oh. You can tell already, right? Yes. yes. Whilst everybody's here, we'll just introduce ourselves. I think we are building a family together in terms of how he sees Ghana and in terms of the opportunities that we can see in Anguilla. It's only 15,000 people, but it's still an opportunity. And that's why I wanted to bring everybody to the table and see what we can do. Hi. Hello. And this yes. is Tony. Tony is the watch guy. Yes. So he makes watches. Hello. I'm Anthony Menslach. I'm the guy who started selling watches on the streets of Accra after I bought my first watch for 50 cities. But my curiosity grew when I realized that all the watches I was selling were imported watches. So I was asking the question, why don't we have any African watch brands? So I took the step to start my own brand. And the dream is to put my brand on the global stage. And this is our beginning. The first time in Africa that um, Ghana or Africa is being mentioned in the watch making conversation. And he's actually got a gift for you. Oh my goodness. I have, I have a gift in here you for you. You make them yourself? Yes, we yeah, have the factory like here oh. in Ghana. We have all the movement assembly units here. Excellent. So we are doing rejuvenating movement, assembling movements, and yes. customizing movements here. I came here with a customized one for you. Oh my goodness. Oh. And this has the coat of arms in gold on the box. Yes. 
and oh show my watch goodness. with your name. Ah, oh, that is awesome. With That's your beautiful. name in that. there. With my name. Oh. Yeah, it has your name down you, there. You're going to make everybody jealous. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a gift Thank from oh my myself, from Lady Denta, yes. from Ghana to you. Oh my goodness. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So you remember Ghana anywhere yes. and everywhere oh, you go. Yes. <laughs> This is beautiful. Are you also wearing caveman? Of course I am. Ah, you? <laughs> I've become your first model in Anguilla. Yes. <laughs> I want everybody to know that this outfit is from chocolate. I feel like I'm seven feet tall after putting this on, you know? <laughs> How did you get into this business? It's ah, a great question. Huh? So first of all, um, I didn't think I was going to be a real estate developer. When I was young, I liked the fire service man or the policeman. I liked the uniform. You know, it, looked, <laughs> it, it, it looked kind of cool. I thought. <laughs> but you know, when I was growing up, I realized that okay, this was not going to take care of the family from where I came. <laughs> So then I traveled and went to England. I accidentally got into steel business scrap, then it became steel. Then I got into telecommunications, so then I became a businessman. But I didn't understand development very well. And so when I came to Ghana, I didn't want to stay here alone. I decided to rent a, a building that I used to go to. And I rented the building to replicate the same idea as a nightclub. And then in three weeks, I made $75,000, which bought the building. And then when I bought the building, somebody offered me 150000 So I made the same profit I made from the nightclub from selling the building. And that's how I got into this. And today I feel very good because I have built this building for four years, I think. This building is one of my biggest maximization. The last biggest maximization I did was this building. It's 108 apartments on one and a half plots. I won eight awards outside Ghana. I'm about to take you to something else that will blow your mind because that's really what I do. I do large scale development, things that keep me in a room with 100 people planning and finding a way to create the money so I can build a nation, build a country. Petronia, it's my vision that I've been doing for 13 years. So this is Petronia. Maybe we can uh, do something on your island too. I'd like to explain this to everybody so they can understand. First of all, Petronia started from acquisition. The power of acquisition. How to acquire a space, a parcel. A parcel that becomes historic. I had to put 65 families, 11 chiefs, one subdivisional chief, and the commission. 2,000 acres. Then after we bought it, I had to bring 40 different engineers and architects together. So all of these are plants and factories. Ladies and gentlemen, our nation will never be built unless we're fully industrialized and we own this things. Now in the middle, it's very interesting. It's called Energy City. So I am the first to introduce this energy city in Africa. So before you do this, there is something called the road grid. And you're seeing it, but all of these are dual carriages. What you're seeing there is a transportation hub. There's even a strip somewhere where you land planes. And then you have all of these developments around that people will just sit and watch. In fact, 
I must say I'm very proud because this is what I look for in the black society, being able to build ourselves. You know, I feel like we're separated. One thing I know for sure is that I'm here to bring light to society. I just want to add value to humanity. I think I'm a philanthropist, but I didn't know. And that I think until some of us would come together and stand for our people, if we all put this together and use the network, I'm sure we can change the world. And you can help me put the light on the world. Thank you, and it's nice. Thank you. Premier, welcome to Ghana again. Um, I know that you were here for the Commonwealth Parliamentary um, event, but what has been the experience from landing in Kotoka Airport? How you're feeling right now? Uh, well, Lady Denta, it's a pleasure meeting you, and certainly um, I feel like family. I feel like I've come home. And from the time we landed at the airport and then came out and they placed the Kento sash uh, yeah. beyond the return, from then until now, I just felt like I'm around people I've known forever. It, it's, it's been such a warm experience. And, and I must say that the people have accepted me as if I'm one of their own. And we are the yeah, one. We are. And then I found that out as I've gone through the country and met different people, gone to different sites, and uh, certainly realized that uh, I can return because people left from Ghana yeah. so that we could have Caribbean inhabited. We look like each other. Yeah. One of the things that really struck me is we seem to have the same rhythm. Mm. We seem to move to the same drum beat, even though, as I said, we've had different experiences yeah. and that's important. Uh, but I also met uh, persons uh, who are driven uh, to be the best that they can be. I met uh, Chocolate from Chocolate Clothing Go yeah, Global, global yeah. uh, and uh, just that experience to, to, to see uh, the detail that he puts into his work, it is something that I know uh, Anguillians do also, that they, when they do something, they want it to be just right. Uh, I met uh, Tony uh, mm -hmm. from Caveman Watches, yeah. and um, you know, it, it's just good to see persons who are so good at their craft. Uh, but they want to be the best at it. You know, I have been through you, been able to meet, meet business persons who are doing great things for Ghana to, to make it modern, to continue to improve the economy. These are things that Anguilla also needs. And though we are small, 15,000 people and 35 square miles, we find that, uh, you know, we need to develop uh, our economy, develop our people, our young people need to feel that they have ownership. Not only in terms of, of helping the economy to improve, but I think people's lives have to be better. And, and I have concern for our young people that uh, they need to develop as the country develops. And I think coming to Ghana has been very important for me because what I see here in different areas, in agriculture, where we went to the greenhouses, yeah and how the youth are being brought in to show them a way of doing agriculture. Yeah. It provides a job, but it also provides that teamwork. They have to work together. And I think you have to have that uh, so that uh, our young people know that they can't do it by themselves. I have uh, been able to, uh, to learn so much, but to feel the warmth and the love of the people of Ghana, which is something that I will take back to Anguilla and hope that with that relationship, I can have more Anguillians come in here. Yeah. We can have more Ghanaians and other persons from the uh, people from the continent coming to Anguilla. Uh, once we improve our connectivity, of yes. course, because it was a long ride yes. to yes. get here. And I'm yes. certain that if we can fix that, which is necessary, we'll get a we lot will more certainly people. Be, be helpful. Absolutely. So if one wants to invest in Anguilla, what are the investment opportunities um, that are currently on the table? That's a great question. And certainly um, Anguilla has a residency by investment program. Mm -hmm. And so anyone who wants to have a second home at, or country, they can call as a second home 
uh, to come to Anguilla, invest in Anguilla. We also have a tax residency and, and, and that. We would like to see uh, and tourism is our main industry. Right. So we have to continue to, um, to advance that. We can diversify in tourism itself. Uh, so we have a lot of real estate opportunities uh, for villas and for hotels. Um, what we'd like to do is go um, to more uh, eco-friendly um, hotel development okay. so that we preserve the environment. We're worried about climate change, rising sea levels, beach erosion. Uh, and uh, preserving our and uh, the oceans that yeah. are around us. So it's important that any investors come in with that in mind, that they want to, uh, you know, preserve the environment while it become an investment opportunity. And other areas of investment, of course, fishing. We have 200 miles of water to the north of us that has not been explored. And we would like uh, that to be another pillar of the economy so investors can come in commercial vessels, fish processing plant, and canning and, and processing of fish, lobsters, right. and then uh, selling locally to hotels, restaurants, to the people, but also having um, trade um, export so that we can develop uh, foreign uh, capital and uh, that would help us to grow and help the economy and also provide jobs. Um, other uh, opportunities in agriculture and uh, right now uh, we as I mentioned uh, the green housing yeah. that is a way that we can produce more in a smaller space and then we can uh, have food security but also have um, export and, and, and that is important to us as we certainly I would like to see um, Ghanaian business uh, persons uh, come in and participate in our developing economy. Fantastic. And I think it's important, um, us as black people, us as Africans, um, yes, we want, I've always been preaching for people to come back home, but we do have brothers and sisters who are outside in the Caribbean um, that can do with the same support. And so if you are looking to go to Anguilla, please get in touch with me. Um, if you're looking at investment opportunities, we can definitely assist and put you in the right direction. But I think it's time for us to really look at um, diversifying um, our investments, not just on the continent, but to also support um, our brothers and sisters in the Caribbean. Um, my final question is, what are the three things that you are taking away from this trip? Certainly um, the warmth and hospitality of the people of Ghana. Uh, the, uh, the friendliness, uh, the ability to just connect with people so easily, and uh, the, the entrepreneurship of Ghanaians. And they want to, to do for themselves and they want to, uh, to do it well. And, and the third thing uh, that I would take away from here is that uh, Ghanaians or independent-minded, strong people. And, and, and I just feel that that's what we need as uh, persons of color uh, to be able to make it in this world, whether here on, on Ghanaian ground or elsewhere in the diaspora. We need that sense of independence, that sense that we belong, but that we want to be the best at what we want, at what we do. But um, you know, the, the, the three foods I love in Ghana, jollof, jollof, and jollof, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean it's, it, it, it's like I, I, I was addicted from the first day, yeah. and also I've had it every day, and I sometimes know. three times a day. Absolutely, thank you so much, Premier, um, for making this trip. You've definitely impacted on our lives over here, and. Already, I have four tickets booked Excellent. to Anguilla with four different um, entities and businesses that want to come. Um, so my first trip will hopefully be in November, um, and then December, and then January, yeah. awesome. and then April. Um, well, I hope that we can be half as hospitable to you as you have been to us. And but we'll be definitely will show you the best that Anguilla has to offer. Thank you so much, and I must say a big thank you to my sister Dorothea for making this happen and being the champion for Anguilla in the UK. Thank you.